Can I taste your juice? Can I taste your juice? Oh, you like that feel? Huh? Yeah, this is really good. I told you. Does it feel good? Oh my god, that's nice. How's it hit? Wow, that hits hard. You like that? I love it. You have to try it. Is it good? Oh my god, Dimitri, this is so good. I told you. Yeah, it's a really good coil. Thank you very much. Hey folks, P. Bissardo. All right, so um, I took a little bit of time off, a little uh, quality Uncle Phil and Lexi time. Uh, isn't she so cute? Um, so uh, I'm back, and as promised, we're going to do a little bit more talking about the ECC, the Electronic Cigarette Convention, uh, do a few of the interviews with some of the more interesting pieces than I saw, okay? And it was a very tough event to cover, hard to cover everything. So if you didn't get covered in this video, uh, I do apologize. Uh, we're also going to talk more about the uh, the event in general, okay? So uh, this is going to be a, a pretty long video, and it's going to take me forever to edit this one down. But anyway, uh, let's get to it. Now, uh, before we do that, um, I got some show and tell to do. Before we do that, uh, I just wanted to mention that, yes, I know, based on the influx of emails and the uh, the Reddit uh, thread that you guys sent me, uh, I am aware that uh, Enhaler is not uh, shipping the Aspire Clearomizer in the retail packaging, okay? I know this. Uh, I also know that they are not sending the Aspire with the uh, the additional or the spare heads that I showed in my retail packaging. Now, I did mention in the video that my stuff came directly from iGate, okay? Um, but I also know how impatient that you guys get waiting for product. So I did go look up where the product was being sold. I found Enhaler. That's also when I found out that Enhaler, uh, I guess, had uh, a little bit of uh, something to do with the design of the product, okay? So yes, I am aware that uh, Enhaler, and you should now be aware that uh, Enhaler is not selling the uh, the Aspire Clearmizer in its retail packaging and it's also not selling the Aspire Clearmizer with the spare heads that I showed you in my packaging okay but I did warn you I told you guys that uh, I didn't see uh, anything in the description of the product online so if you want if you if it was a concern of yours uh, whether or not it was coming with the spare heads to check out with the vendor first but you know, I guess some of you guys didn't do that so uh, that that's the situation right now. So the uh, the price that I did quote is for the Clearomizer tank and one head pre-installed uh, and not in retail packaging. Now I'm sure that's going to change as more vendors come online, as more of these Aspires become available. I know they're available in colors already. I've already heard uh, rumblings about glass versions of this uh, this Clearomizer. So um, uh, we're going to be seeing a lot more of this Clearomizer in the uh, the near future. That much I could pretty much guarantee you. All right, now before we get to the show and tell, let's talk a little bit more about that Aspire because this is something that I hear a lot of, um, something that I've experienced as well. Uh, hey, Phil, why does yours work so much better than mine? Or sometimes, in my case, why does yours work so much better than mine? Um, there are a lot of factors uh, going on with products like this, like the T3s, like the bottom uh, the bottom coil clearomizers, even the top coil clearomizers. Uh, if you don't think that uh, the thickness of the juice, the viscosity of the juice, if the temperature outside, if the barometric pressure, if the elevation at which you are vaping, if you don't think all of these things don't affect these products, um, I think you're uh, you're mistaken, uh, because what I have found is that um, it, it, it's very very difficult to create one product that works with the thousands of e-liquids that are out there now. Which is kind of why I feel like we're at a point uh, where everything should have some kind of airflow control, some kind of juice flow control, so that we can have a single product that will work uh, as well as possible. Um, with all of the different e-liquids out there and with your tastes as a vapor. Um, you know, the perfect example is like the um, the Ithaca, and I had it just here in front of me a little while ago, uh, or Ithaca, however you want to call it. So this one device, uh, it has juice flow control. It has air flow control. It has a, a build section that you could raise or lower and change the temperature of the vape. It has the ability to adjust the, uh, the center pin. So uh, a lot of adjustments on here, but I would like to see some of these adjustments um, you know, be easy to use and in a simple product like something like the Aspire. Of course, that's going to raise the price a little bit, um, but it would be nice to have some of that adjustability so that you can tailor your device 
to work with uh, anything and, and not only any liquid, but also the environment that you're, you're in. Um, you know, it, it seems to be a very, very fine line between um, dry, perfect and gurgling. Okay. Uh, you know, another great example, uh, you know, I take my devices and I have to learn, I got to teach myself to stop doing this. Uh, I fill them up all before a, a, a trip on an airplane. Okay. It's, I, I got to stop filling them up because what happens is the cabin pressure changes a little bit and I wind up opening up my bag and finding all my devices empty with juice all over the place. Okay. So all of these external things, these, these, uh, these variables, uh, do affect how some of these things work. Uh, and you need to understand that before you start blaming, you know, me because mine works better than yours or your friend because his works better than yours. Um, you know, another perfect example is temperature, okay? Your liquid will be one thickness at a certain temperature. Increase the temperature outside, that liquid is going to thin down, and it's not going to behave the way it did when it was thicker, okay? So a lot of stuff going on there, uh, and it all kind of um, affects how certain products uh, work, uh, be it for the better or for the worse, okay? Now let's go into some show and tell. Mod stands. Everybody's coming out with a mod stand. There are there are like so many mod stands that you could buy out there uh, these days. But all of the mod stands that I've had up until this point uh, all suffer from the same thing. Uh, what happens is you get a mod stand and you love it and it fits all your devices and then you change devices, okay? And your mod stand no longer uh, works for you because it wasn't designed for that device. And I've said for a while, and I've even talked to some uh, mod stand builders, uh, how cool would it be if you had a stand that grew with you, that had like inserts or something that you could, you know, change out and put something else in so that the, the stand would grow with you and would also change with you as your device changes. Well, we have one available now, and it is this one right here. Okay, and I'm going to I'm going to go ahead and move the lights here a little bit so that we could see what's going on. You also get to see some of my greasy Italian skin. Um, but uh, here it is. This one is called the uh, the Reviser. Okay, uh, there uh, the company is Vape Crate. You're going to find this at VapeCrate.com. All right, and uh, they have several different versions of the Reviser. They also have other mod stands available. But what makes the Reviser cool? is that it's modular and it changes as your devices change, okay? So again, this is the uh, the Model 7. There's also a Model 5 and a Model 3, smaller versions of this one right here. Uh, they're gonna cost less money. This one is gonna cost you $124.95, okay? So they're not cheap, uh, but that price does include all of the, um, uh, the plates that we're gonna talk about in a little bit. Uh, it is made of uh, HDPE plastic, which is a high-density polyethylene plastic. Uh, this is going to be chemical resistant, impact resistant, and water resistant. I can tell you that these plates are tough. Uh, they are heavy, um, and it's just a, it's a very, very high-quality piece, okay? And by the way, you do have your choice of colors uh, in this, uh, not only the stand, but the plates as well. Uh, it comes in white, black, blue, green, red, yellow, tan, and orange. Sorry, no Dimitri pink at this time. Now, what makes this unique and different from some of the other stands out there, again, is that it is modular. When you, um, you, you basically build this system on the website and you define what kind of plates that you want. So for example, let's say I wanted to uh, use this um, with a uh, with an MVP, but I wanted to put two egos here so I could take this plate out just like that. See, there's that plate there. Uh, I could get a different plate like this one right here. I could insert that plate, all right, and it just pops into place. And now I can use this with an MVP and with a couple of uh, egos uh, just like that. Okay, so uh, really, I mean, this is great because you know, uh, our devices change and this changes with you. Um, even these plates here on the bottom, these are all removable. You can define uh, which plate that you want. Okay. And um, you can even have plates custom built for you. Uh, I'm sure there's going to be an increase in price and probably in lead time as well. Uh, but uh, that is available for you as a service as well. So uh, a great, great system. I think this is terrific. Uh, it does get a very, very strong thumbs up as soon as I find the thumbs up, even though this is uh, just a, a show and tell, but I think it's worthy of a thumbs up. 
there's the thumbs up. Here's some still photos of, uh, of me putting the, uh, the, the whole thing together. Okay, it comes wrapped uh, in, in a whole lot of plastic wrap. Um, really, really easy to put together and assemble. And then once it's together, you go ahead and figure out uh, where you want to put your plates. And here's a video of me just kind of playing around with it a little bit and uh, and loading it up with some devices. Uh, I just, I, I love it. I think it's terrific. As a matter of fact, uh, I even ordered um, or I, I talked to them about some different plates uh, that will work with uh, my needs a little bit better. And I'm thinking about ordering another one, a smaller version of it to sit here on my, uh, my workbench because uh, this one's a little bit large for uh, my bench. So I'm going to be ordering some more stuff from these guys because I think it's a great idea. All right, so as promised, let's talk about ECC a little bit. And like I said, with this uh, this video, we're going to talk um, to some of the uh, the vendors and some of the manufacturers that were there, some of the more interesting things that I saw. Very tough event to cover because it was so big. Um, but we'll also talk about the event itself a little bit. Like I said, it had a very different feel to it than some of the other events that I've been to. So if you've been to like a Vape Bash or a Vape Fest or a Vapor Con, uh, it wasn't like that big uh, square room with the plastic tables around the side uh, where the vendors set up and like the big community in the center. Uh, this was uh, nooks and crannies and rows and custom um, custom uh, displays and like some people went all out on their displays to like create an atmosphere for their product. Um, you know, from from my perspective, I was like, you know, all right, well, where are some of the people that I know, uh, like the Cisco's and the Dino's and the Empire Mods and some of the guys uh, that I've come to know at these events? And it was like, really, it's one part that um, uh, the event is on the West Coast, right? So I'm not used to some of these vendors that are out there. Some of the vendors are new because this is a, it is a booming uh, industry. Um, but I think it was really had a lot to do with the fact that it was West Coast. So you have some of the East Coast vendors, because the ones that I just men uh, mentioned, Dino, uh, Cisco, Avid Vapor, um, uh, Empire, they're all based in New York. Okay, so that's why they go to the East Coast events, I guess. Uh, so it was that type of thing. And a lot of people even asked me, they said, you know, how come you didn't go to uh, Vape Fest? Right away, they're looking for the drama. Uh, there's actually no drama there. It's just that I went to Vape Fest last year. Last year it was in New York. York, so it was easier for me to go to um, this year vape fest and ECC happened to uh, be on the same date uh, I wanted to experience something different for myself I wanted to meet a lot of the people out there on the West Coast so that's the event that I chose to go to no drama there whatsoever um, so you know even though I said that you know there there were a lot of people that I didn't know there uh, and it was great meeting everybody there were a lot of people that I did know too uh, like this friendly face right here uh, vapor villains here There's a friendly face. <laughs> oh look, building a coil, imagine that. <laughs> How you doing? Oh, terrible. What do you think of the show? That's good, crazy. So I have a, had a coil on this mesh U wick with flat canthal ribbon for six months. And it popped today of course. because I don't have my stuff with me. <laughs> so now I'm using like all this borrowed crap to set this up and uh, I don't know. I think I'll be fine. So well, you know, it's tr testing your true coiling abilities right now. That's it. There you go. I think I got it though. We'll see. Probably not. Who am I kidding? <laughs> How you doing, man? I'm good. Good. I'm tired. Yeah. Didn't yep. get much sleep last night. I never get much sleep. Yeah. That's Especially true. with Dimitri in the room. Oh, you're rooming with Dimitri? Yeah. Oh, you poor best. Uh, <laughs> actually, he's a great guy. It's been a lot of fun. Yeah. Oh man, all right, so I'm gonna get my job done today so I can actually sit down and enjoy for a little while. What's so. uh, what's your job today? I'm doing it right now. Oh, all right, well, fair <laughs> enough. Well, you're doing an excellent job. Well, thank you very much. All right, brother. Coil on, brother. Thanks, man. Right. I'll talk to you later. All right. Hill Giant. Love that guy. He's such a nice guy. Um, why is it? Why is that stuff breaks when you need it the most? My 357 that I brought to do juice tasting um, popped the night before uh, the event in the room. Um, as a matter of fact, I had uh, cock juice in it. Uh, if you saw the walkthrough, you know what I'm talking about. So in addition to this uh, looking different from other vape meats that I've been to, uh, vaping in general on the West Coast is different than I'm used to. Uh, what do I mean by that? A lot of mechs out there, okay? Um, that's kind of what I saw the most of. A lot of shiny, beautiful uh, new mechs. Now that's not to say that there weren't people uh, vaping regulated devices, CE style tanks and, and cartomizer tanks, uh, still, you know, vaping that those kind of things as well. But what I saw most of was a lot of mechs. 
uh, a lot of dripping atomizers, a lot of dripping atomizers drilled wide open, uh, a lot of uh, lung hitting, a lot of clouds of vapor, uh, a lot of uh, sub ohming. Okay, I'm not saying anything bad about that. It's just uh, it's just different. The 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 vaping environment, the vaping scene is a lot different uh, than what I've uh, grown accustomed to here on the East Coast. A little bit of a different uh, thing that they're doing out there on the West Coast. Uh, even the e-liquids, the e-liquids. Uh, uh, I was interested in some e-liquids, and they weren't available in 12 milligram. They had like six milligram and zero uh, milligram. Uh, higher uh, VG uh, ratios in their e-liquids. So um, just really uh, unique to see how on the same continent, uh, different coasts, how things are being done a little bit differently, and the vape shops. Uh, you can't drive for more than a mile without seeing a, a, a vape shop, tons of vape shops out there. And we're going to take a look at uh, uh, at least one of them, or actually two of them, a little bit later on in this video. Uh, but right now, let's talk about some mechs and some new mechs. Here we are with the owner of Vape Life at uh, ECC. See how I ended that real quick? <laughs> yeah. Don't worry about it. Uh, ECC 2030. How is the show working out for you? It's pretty good, man. It's it's insane, like amount of people that came in. It really is. Good. It really is crazy. Super and you good. are releasing a new mechanical, right? Yes, sir. It's uh, actually a Zipper hybrid. Uh, that we're All right. Releasing. So talk a little. Let's hold it up a little bit higher so we can hear you and see it at the same time. Um, there you go. Yeah. And so what is this? Um, the what I wanted to do with with our first mod, I want to come out with just a basic mod that just more on function because um, we're big on dripping um, so I wanted to um, create like just a base platform for everybody that that they could be creative with it you know um, just basic three poles um, but I am uh, putting four holes that's um, that, that you could uh, adjustable airflow yeah. Yeah, and also um, I'm introducing like a new concept that's using a, a bimetal bi conductivity. Um, I tested a bunch of metals. Um, I'm introducing, uh, you know, separate uh, metals together. Yeah. So I'm using um, a softer metal on the top and a harder metal on the bottom. Huh. And you're uh, finding better conductivity that way? Um, yeah, on, my, on our test, yeah. Really? We are, yeah. I put I put the the softer metal on the top and harder on the bottom just because you know this this part moves the bottom one moves. Right. So actually right now it's, it's pretty good. We tested it uh, at a point uh, three ohm resistant and voltage drop was point three also. Yeah. Okay. So the, I mean the vape scene out here in California a little bit different. Okay. You, you a little bit are, crazy. You guys are a little bit crazy out here. Right? Yeah. So but uh, we're trying to make it safe. You know, like we're trying to like. To educate people that you know, not sub ohm is not really the the way to go. Like, just you gotta know your batteries, you gotta know your limit before you try anything crazy. Okay, so folks, this is a guy who's in the business. This is a guy who does sub ohm, but he's telling you that you know, if you're gonna do it, we, yeah. uh, we don't think you're evil, but we just think that you you need to know what you're doing. Yes, right, absolutely. You know your limitations. Um, you know, it's just, you know, it's getting hot, just kind of not good. back off. Right, yeah. yeah. You want your coil to get hot, not necessarily yes, your battery. not your battery, <laughs> not your switch. Yeah, if, if something else is heating up, um, you know, there's, there's, it's probably dirty contacts, you know, just, just check it. Right. Yeah. Well, it was great talking to you. Thank Lots you, of luck Phil. with the new device. What's the name of it? Um, right now, there's no name, uh, there's no release date yet. It's just, we want to show Perfect it. Perfect name for it would be the Dimitri. <laughs> I would it's, call it the Pete Bissardo, but that would sound way too high. It's not pink, though. It's not pink. <laughs> I love it. Sorry. I love how everybody talks about that. That's cool. Well, lots right. of luck with the release Thank of it. Thank you, you know, so let much. Us, let, let, let me know this so I can let people know when it becomes right. available. Yes. And uh, good talking to you. Yeah. Thank and you. And lots of luck with the rest of the show. Thank you. So there we go. A new uh, hybrid uh, dripper, really, coming out from the folks at, uh, at Vape Life. Um, and you heard two pieces of important information there. Number one, we don't think sub ohming is necessarily an evil thing, but we do think that you need to be safe about it and you need to understand the limitations of your battery and you need to understand how to do it safely. Um, and that was kind of a common theme as I talked to different people and different vendors uh, across the event about sub ohming. 
uh, and they all said the same thing. You just need to be safe. You need to understand what you're doing before you go doing it, okay? Because it does have the uh, the potential to be dangerous, all right? So uh, there's that second important piece of information. He knew, he knew that Dimitri likes the color pink. And I thought that was fantastic because I did not plant that. He just came out with that. Terrific. There you go. You got to you got to rub a little a little faster. Am I doing it good? A little faster. A little faster. There you go. Now rub a little thing? harder. Oh yeah. You like that right there? There you huh? go. That's perfect. That's okay. perfect. Okay. All right. Did I not tell you that metal polish worked good? Absolutely. Unbelievable. That's terrific. Now, there was somebody else there at ECC that I am familiar with. Um, and this is some really deep inside information from Brandon from Evolve. See, he didn't know. He, <laughs> I always catch this guy's surprise. I always catch him off guard. I love it. I uh, love it. So here we are at ECC, California, with uh, Brandon. Yep. He, um, oh, the original you know, he's from this little known company called, you know, Evolve. <laughs> uh, they have things like the Kick and the DNA 20. Now I'm going to give you some uh, really inside information. Now watch how this goes. Brandon, can you tell us anything about any of your new and upcoming products? I wish I could. Thank you I very much, Brandon. <laughs> Thank you very much. It was nice talking to you. Enjoy the rest of the show. Thank you. <laughs> Now, I have come to the conclusion that Brandon is nothing more than a male model front man for Evolve, okay? Because every time I talk to him, every time I ask him, what's new, what's coming up, what's what's the next thing from you guys, he always tells me the same thing. Sorry, I can't tell you. Um, but whatever it is from Evolve, I'm sure it's going to be uh, pretty spectacular, like some of their products in the past. So another guy that I met for the first time, and I had a chance to talk to him about some of his upcoming product, some of which I'm not really happy with. You'll find out why in a second. Uh, turns out that Faceless actually has a face. I wonder if anybody knows who you are. I hope not. Because most of the times you're Faceless. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, I just walk around now. Nobody knows who I am, so I'm good. So, so here we are with uh, Faceless at ECC. <laughs> It's nice to finally meet you in person. Thank you. It really is. I've heard like one or two things about you. Uh oh, they're not. They're not. You got, not, the, you got that true. mod out there. What's it called? Uh, which one? Uh, any of them. High hybrid, <laughs> Pharaoh, the Pure. I'm working on an atomizer as well. Are you really? Yeah. So what's coming up in faces? What, what can we expect? Uh, I'm working on the Illuminatis now. They're stainless steel and they're going to be gold plated, but they're only going to be the previous Illuminati owners and whatever I have left over, I'll sell. Probably to the individuals I know. Uh, it's going to be hard to get. I was going to do the 911, but I'm thinking about canceling it because last year I did the 911. I took, I sold it at a very discounted price, and I donated the rest of the money to Fort Worth Fire Department. But I don't want to see that flipped. I don't want to see it resold. And and the people that I gave it to originally, you hardly ever see them. And I don't think I want to see that resold. So I probably won't do that. That's, that's really respectful. Yeah. yeah so I, I probably won't do that. And I, people will get mad, but I'm probably not going to do okay, it. Okay. So tell us about the diamond idea. The wife. It's her fault, isn't it? Yes. Okay. Yeah. There, there are, there are guys who have wives who vape that that hate you everywhere right now because of that idea. <laughs> I just want you. To, you seem like a very sweet person, but I, for one, do not like to hear about this idea right here. Go ahead, tell us the idea. Well, it's gonna have rubies in it, diamonds in it. You can get a real diamond for. You can put a real diamond in. It's gonna be an upgrade. I have the prongs that go around. It's gonna be expensive. But the regular one won't. I mean, it'll be fake, you know, diamonds, fake rubies. Right. It'll be priced in the $100 to $200 range. I haven't said it yet. It's a prototype. So I'm still working on it. I still got to do my, I didn't even do machine time. I finished it yesterday, assembled it, got on the plane, and brought it here. Mm -hmm. So, and they're gone now. I mean, I sold them like 15 so seconds. So you don't have anything to show? No, they're gone. Okay. You'll send me some pictures, though? I will. I'll send you one. How's that? I've never sent you anything. You haven't? Never. Yeah, and I've, and I've never asked you for anything. No, you haven't. Okay. But I'm going to send you one. I appreciate that. No problem. Well, it's good to meet you. Good to meet you in, uh, in person. And good to put a face behind faces. I appreciate it. Right. Enjoy the rest of the I'm show. sorry I'm not better looking. You said that last night. I, I, I know. Wear, I, think wear, I think you were dead sexy. I'm not going to lie to you. I was going to wear pantyhose over my head. <laughs> I thought that'd be funny, but... It's nice meeting you, brother. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. So there you go. There's Faceless, the guy behind the iHybrid mods. Um, but uh, really, dude, like diamond and ruby encrusted mods. You know, my wife got wind of that and she was like, hmm. Um, <laughs> you know, there's a market for everything out there. And right now there are there are guys with uh, significant others uh, who vape, who really don't like you very much right now. Uh, but we are looking forward to seeing what's coming next from Faceless. And it was good meeting you.
So now I head over to the Inigan booth. Um, they had the uh, the new VTR there. Hopefully I will have one in uh, soon enough to uh, to do a review on and to show you guys. I'll show you a little preview right now. A um, little funny story here. Now I've talked with George before. Obviously George is like an American stage name. I, 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 he told me his real name once. Uh, I don't remember it. They are from uh, Shenzhen, Shenzhen, China. Um, George does speak uh, a little bit of English, uh, obviously uh, broken English, um, but I was talking to uh, his partner, and I think his partner is the president of Inigan, and um, I talked to him for, oh, I don't know, good solid 10 minutes, and he smiled and he nodded his head, and that's when somebody told me that he didn't speak a word of English, so... <laughs> Um, I, he seemed like he was understanding what I was saying anyway. So anyway, uh, let's see uh, what George has because he brought something to the show uh, that I had no idea that they were coming out with. Uh, let's have a look. Thank you, thanks. All right, folks. ECC 2013, and here we are so with my buddy George. George. Hello. <laughs> Say hello, my fellow vapors. Yeah, right hello, here. my yeah. fellow vapors. <laughs> George, uh, you know, we've talked before, I've actually met you before, we talked at uh, Andre's shop up in Buffalo, New York. Um, I love your product, I love your product because it's unique, it's original, and it's high quality, okay? You, you kept something from me though, you didn't tell me something. And it's yeah. the first time that I've seen it is here. We're going to talk about that in a second, but first, let's take a look at the VTR, okay? Because um, people are talking about the VTR, they're excited about it. So let's see it live uh, okay. this time. Yeah, that's very nice. So, uh, this will be I test the VTR. Uh, this is the uh, first, let me say, uh, this is replaceable berries. Yep. And the inside, three clink, all. Then you check so your clear miser. This I clear 30s, the plus the ohms meter. Then you adjust the wattage for 3.0 to 15. Okay, so your wattage goes from three watts up to 15 watts in 0.5 watt increments, right? Yeah. Okay. Then you press this button again to change your voltage mark. Then. Voltage from the 3.0 to 6. To 6. Very nice. Yeah. We get two cars, another color like this, but you know, some folks have own clearomizers like a food tank or Kimfer Light, different clearomizers. So we we build, uh, we we make this adapter so it can more compatible guys to to, to, to so, more so in other words we can have something built in here so you can screw it right down in here yeah or you can have the adapter so your attachment comes up here yes okay i love the yeah and how many colors do those come in oh uh, they have it will be available two color one is color like this one and another color it's, it's like, a, like a forest green color. Mm -hmm. And it's very heavy. I mean, it's a solid device. And we, I mean, you guys make solid devices, right? We need to make a solid device. <laughs> very impressive, my friend. Thank you so much. All right. So the, now there's something else that you were, you were holding out. You were holding out. You didn't tell me. You said that there would be a surprise here. Yeah. Okay. All right. So we all know this, and, and some of us love it. Some of us think, think it's crazy. But it's the uh, the uh, Anokin uh, 134, the Itaste 134. Yeah. I mean, it's it really is one of the most unique products that have come out of China, and there are people who go crazy for this thing. But what I didn't know, and what you showed here for the first time, and it's not yet available, is no available like. Is it just for a It has a baby like, brother. The, we call it a 134 uh, Mini. Yeah, so there it is, the 134 Mini. Yeah. And this is a skinnier version of the um, the 134, right? Yeah. So are, are these battery tubes interchangeable? Or yeah, yeah. They are. Yeah, yeah. The battery is uh, uh, changeable. We put two, two different tubes. One of these for short battery, this for longer. Yeah, yeah, the VTR. No, the, um, the, the clearance. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh. Is that what you originally asked? Yeah, yeah. There it is. Yeah, I like that. And here we're planning to make, you know, 
more toys than all these wanted. Some, some consumers like, say oh, yeah, they get a special phone. liquid. They can. <laughs> I don't know about, about that. Maybe but like a, a, a lampoon of fire. Oh, yeah, yeah. 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 I, I mean, I'm get very good for, for heat or flavor. So we make it. We be making more options. So get wide range. Oh, okay, so I didn't know this that either. Yeah. All right, so with the original 134, you went in um, in one watt increments. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And with the mini, you go in 0.5 watt. Yeah, yeah. 9.5. Ah, very cool. Very cool. So what else do you have planned? Do you have any uh, other than this? What's what's next for an open? This new mod. So we we plan to use another brand. We call it. Huh? Hey. Cool Fire One. Oh yeah. Actually, this mod is special for beginners. For me, I have like three years vaping experience. I have three uh, vaping experience. So for me, I can use my ITS VV, VTR, MVP. I can adjust whatever I want. So I'm very, you know, how to do. But for beginners. They sometimes they you know they use disposables. What kind of what you do? But that's just we go to know everybody. But it's not very good device. But for this one, we can you know the pyramides. So the inside automatically to give you wide range of water. So you can get very good vapor for heat. So this basically it's a self-adjusting device. Yeah, self-adjusting device. Okay, so that's that's very interesting. This is going to be a very interesting one for me to test. <laughs> I want to put this one on the scope and see what it does. Absolutely. Okay. All right, George, uh, always really, really nice to talk to you. I'm glad to see you here in the States. This Is is this your first um, show that you guys have done? Uh, yeah, that's the first show here in the States. But very exciting, you know, a lot of people, very nice to meet you. And a lot of friends, very friendly country, so I do love Awesome. States. Thank you very much. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you, buddy. Always nice to talk to you. Lots of luck. Lots of luck with the company. Lots of luck with the new products. <laughs> Thank you. Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you. So there is George from Inikin. Um, some more cool product coming out from those guys. One thing that we already knew about was the uh, the VTR. Uh, some things that I didn't know about, at least I didn't know about them. Uh, the 134, the mini version of that with replaceable battery tubes. Okay, so you can get it in the 18350 uh, tube, an 18490 tube. Will it have an 18650 tube? I'm not really sure. Uh, also, uh, a little bit finer adjustments on that 1.5 uh, watt increments as opposed to the uh, the 1 watt increments that we're seeing on the 134. And also this cool fire concept, a self-adjusting device. Hmm, that one I'm not so sure about. That one I look forward to throwing on the scope and seeing what it actually does. So just some more cool and unique products from the folks at Inikin. Vapor Bomb. Uh, Steve was there from Vapor Bomb. Um, Steve, the guy who stole Dimitri's heart right out from under me as he started building Dimitri's coils as opposed to the coils that I was building for him. Uh, oh, well. Uh, I had a chance to talk to Steve at the booth a little bit, and then uh, Steve was nice enough to open up his shop. So we went there actually like later on in the evening um, to take a look at his shop and talk to him a little bit there as well. And it was his birthday. So we sang happy birthday to him. Uh, and uh, finally, I have uh, one of those right there. That is the Omega Atomizer. So I'm looking forward to reviewing this and, and vaping Cali style uh, with this one right here because you can uh, double coil this one and you can open it wide open. Uh, it's got some adjustable airflow on it. Uh, and again, the Omega comes from Vapor Bomb. So let's talk to Steve a little bit at his booth and then we'll go to his shop and talk to him there some more too. The diamond in the room. What's going on? Not much. What's, what's, the, what's the evil layer going on? Can, can we come back here? It's like, it's a dungeon. It's called the break room, the lunch room. It's the break room and the lunch room. We have uh, Sam Matt. Say hi. How's it going, Pasado? What's going on? What's going Dude, on? that Korean barbecue is amazing. Yeah. It was good. It was good. Oh my God, that was good. How many helpings? You had like five helpings, right? I've never been at one of those. No, there's ice cream at the end. It makes it great. I did have the ice cream. Mm -hmm. you, can't, you can't use the ice cream. How's the show going? Yeah. How's the show going? Good. good, good, good. Did you tell? We're kind of busy. Kind of busy. We're kind of busy. Kind of busy. <laughs> really busy. <laughs> what do you sell the most of Uh, actually, me yes. Corey's been manning the front right now. Yeah, actually, he's kind of busy. So I got. Let's go to Eunice. Eunice. What have we been selling the most of at the show lately? Um, Omega. Yes. Figured that. I figured it's We knew that. Maybe, maybe. <laughs> and I finally have one to review. There we go. Very there we excited. go. Thank you, bro. 
Good luck with the rest of the show, Steve. Yep. Right. Yeah, no, I'm doing it. Right. But this doesn't like me. It always does not. Really? Late night vape shop reviews at Vapor Bombs. <laughs> Last three months of us sign waivers. Our daily builds. About two, three months worth. What's the waiver? Basically, does it say that if anything happens to it, they Basically, not anything, um, sub home is dangerous, made the customer aware, because most people that get into vapor are unaware of a high risk charge. Right. Dangerous is sub home vaping. Do you mind if I take this or not? Yeah, go ahead. Uh, d maybe damage that may happen to their part. So as soon as they sign, goes, what am I signing that for? So they give you the opportunity to actually educate the customer. Yeah, and that's what I, you want. I like that. So, I like that. And also this, this is good right here. See, this is very important. You treat him like a monkey. Tip man. your <laughs> builder. <laughs> All right, I need a vape. Um, by the way, Smoke Tech Magneto kicked with a kick too, and a uh, Russian sitting on top of it. Uh, review for this coming up real soon, along with that kick too, because I want to see how it performs next to the kick one. Do a little side by side comparison, and I do apologize for the video at the uh, the vapor bomb shop, but I actually didn't know that we were going, so all I had with me was my phone, so I shot the video with that, and it was late, even later for me because I was still on New York time. So anyway, what Steve was talking about at the end of that uh, clip is he has waivers, okay? So if people buy a RBA and they want, um, you know, the shop to actually build it for them, he has them sign a waiver, uh, especially if it's a sub-ohm build, uh, just letting people know that it is not a, a safe thing to do. There are dangers involved. And he takes that opportunity while they are signing that waiver to educate the uh, the customer a little bit as to what those dangers are and how to do things safely. So uh, I think that's a that's a good idea. So, you know, you're not going to be able to fight this at this point. You're not going to be able to tell people, especially being a shop owner, not to do it because they're just going to go someplace else and have it done or worse yet, try on their own without knowing what to do. So he takes that opportunity to at least educate the, uh, the consumer at that point, letting them know that it is dangerous and letting them know how to do it safely and properly. So, uh, so I, I think that's a good thing. All right. So anyway, that is Steve and Vapor Bomb. Happy birthday. Another one of the shops that I got to see was one of CJ's Vapor Venue shops, okay? It was actually right next door to uh, the Korean barbecue where we had dinner one night. And thank you again, CJ, for your hospitality that night. Um, so he opened up the shop and we all just kind of walked over from uh, the, the, uh, the Korean barbecue over to his shop. And I just kind of did a real quick video walkthrough of the shop just to kind of show you guys. Monkey, the house of monkey, the monkey house. This is where we keep the, the motorcycles and stuff, the scooters right here. This is, Brand, this is where Brandon shops, this is where he buys all his stuff. It's DNA 20 devices here. Who is that? Guy? Oh, it's me. <laughs> Hi. So thank you very much, CJ. And by the way, that uh, pretty little lady there at the end—that's uh, Jessica of John and Jessica uh, from Vapor Leaf. 
Uh, they were the ones who actually dragged my butt from the airport to the hotel. Uh, they rented the, um, uh, the Ford Mustang convertible. Have you ever been in the back seat of a Ford Mustang convertible? It was even smaller than the airline seats, okay? But thank you guys very much for the ride and for your company because I really enjoy spending time with you too. You too, both of you, both of you. Jessica Moore a little bit. Another person that I finally got a chance to uh, meet was the creator and inventor and manufacturer of this right here, the Electric Angel. His name is Mika. He has a uh, kind of a new and unique product coming out, and I can assure you the prototype version that you're going to see is not what the final version will look like. Uh, let's talk to him a little bit about his new device that's coming out. So here we are at ECC, and this is uh, Mika, yeah. right? And uh, this is my friend from Electric Angel, the guy who brings Hi. the Electric Angel. Uh, device that uh, I'm very familiar with and I happen to really like. Uh, there's one right there for you. But um, Mika is kind of breaking out of the mechanical world, yep. right? And getting into the uh, regulated world yes. uh, with the new Invictus that's coming out soon. Mika, tell us about the Invictus and, and, and what, what the idea is behind the device. The whole idea is that um, the first idea was that you need the uh, a uh, uh, variable voltage device that you can put anything you like on it. It automatically gives you a range of uh, uh, safe uh, vaping uh, voltage, but uh, if you want, you can uh, switch it off and use anything uh, 2.0 uh, to 8.2 volts. So you can use uh, any uh, ohms, uh, it's going to work uh, 0.2 or 0.3 ohms up to okay, 5 so ohms. Let, let's hear that again. Okay, so that's 0.2 to 0.3 ohms and up. Yep, okay. up to 5 ohms. Up to 5 ohms. Yes. And the idea here is that it basically has two different modes, okay? Yes. So it has a safe vaping mode, yep. and then it has an open mode that really allows you to set it however you want to. Yes. So that's a great device for somebody who's a beginning vaper, yep. or somebody who's maybe a little bit more of an advanced vaper. Exactly. Okay? And you have a prototype here to take yep. a look at? We have a prototype here. So it's uh, when you start it on, it gives you the ohms, uh, and uh, after that it gives you a uh, recommended uh, voltage uh, you can go up or down then it stops it doesn't go any higher so you can fire your coin but you can uh, oh, you can go off the automation mode and now you can do anything you want you can go up to 8.2 volts so you really can fire your coin we have two patents in here. We have patent for the uh, software, how it's work. It's pending in US and Europe and Asia. And the uh, other patent is that it's going to uh, regulate itself up before the atomizer. So if you put four volts, you get every time four volts. And uh, it's giving you the same kind of power as a normal battery. So you feel the difference in a wave uh, when you uh, vaping the mechanical mode or something variable voltage. So you can feel the uh, difference here. Okay, I mean, so that's really terrific. And the idea here is that you're basically gonna have one power head. Okay, so it's gonna be one power head and then like different bases yes. uh, for different looks or maybe for a full woman, yeah. which is really nice. Okay, but uh, fully automatic. And I know you're saying 0.5 yep. ohms up there right yep. now, but you're thinking about going even lower to 0.2 ohms. It already works 0.1 up, but uh, people are, we uh, first talk, think about it that we're strictly for 0.5, but everybody's saying me that they want 0.2, so it works 0.2, but it's safe, it's regulated, so it doesn't matter what kind of battery you use, it's uh, all the way safe to use in lower ohms. Right. And it's not going to look like that. No, no, it's not going to look like that. <laughs> okay. This is just a prototype. So when can we expect this from you? I hope end of this year or early next year. Okay. And what's your estimated price point or is it way too early to tell at this point? It's uh, way too early to tell because uh, we uh, just decided what materials we are using. We are using stainless steel, brass and titanium. But uh, 
Estimated 250 euros. Okay, so it's not going to be a cheap one. No, not going to be a cheap one, but it covers everything. Yeah, so it's going to be really one device for everything. Yeah. Okay, I like that idea. Well, it was great talking to you. Yeah, enjoy the. How's the show working out? For you? Uh, it's very good. A lot of interest. Like, yes, very, okay, lots very of good. Interest. Thanks very much. Thank nice you. Nice talking to you. Enjoy the rest of the show. Thank you. Thank you. So just to make that clear, 0.2 ohms up to 5 ohms, and what is it, 2 volts up to 8.2 volts, and regulating and doing it safely, that is a device that I want to try. Uh, it just sounds like the kind of device that you can really screw anything onto uh, and, and, and adjust it to your liking. Uh, hopefully they will deliver, and I look forward to throwing that one on the scope. All right, so the plan was to have all of these interviews in a single video, but you know how my videos go. So uh, I'm not going to be able to do that. I think I'm already at 45 minutes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to break here. All right, I'm going to uh, work on the second half of this video. We're going to talk about one more piece of hardware, some e-liquids, and take a look at some other random video from the event. Okay, so uh, as always, you guys, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you again soon. Can I taste your juice?